I, I should mention that Professor Fuhr insists that there will be pro should be proceedings of this meeting. So uh, if you are willing to submit a paper, just uh, you get an email. Okay. So this talk will be uh, dedicated to neutrinos and more specifically to the attempts to understand the observed pattern of neutrino mixing, uh, uh, which was determined in neutrino oscillation experiments using symmetries. Now, uh, now, as you most of you know, uh, I suppose, understanding the origin of the pattern of neutrino mixing and of neutrino mass square differences, which was which emerged from data, is actually one of the most challenging problems in neutrino physics. And it is part of the more general fundamental problem in particle physics of understanding the origin of flavor in the quark and lepton sector. That means the understanding the origin of quark masses, charged lepton masses, neutrino masses, quark mixing, and neutrino mixing. Now, uh, in neutrino physics, of course, we have uh, four other fundamental problems. Uh, one is, the first is probably, I mean, the other is arbitrary here, is uh, determination of the status of lepton charge conservation and the nature of uh, massive neutrinos, which can be Dirac or Majorana particles. Then the second one is determination of the status of CP symmetry in the lepton sector. And here, the main contribution, experimental contribution, expected to come from the currently running T2K and NOVA experiments and future T2 hyper and Dune experiments. Then uh, we have the problem of determination of the type of spectrum neutrino masses obey. And finally, we have very, very loose constraints on the absolute neutrino mass scale, and we would like to determine this scale. And the program of research in this field, I mean, on these items, goes beyond 2030. Now, from uh, solar, atmospheric, accelerator, and reactor experiments, uh, in these experiments, we have obtained compelling evidences for oscillations, transitions in flight between different flavor neutrinos. And all compelling neutrino oscillation data can be explained within a very simple three neutrino mixing scheme. Uh, in this scheme, the uh, Pontecorvo Maki Nakagawa Sakata neutrino mixing matrix is a three by three unitary matrix, and it can be parametrized with, with three mixing angles. And depending on whether the massive neutrinos are Dirac or Majorana particles, by one Dirac, or one Dirac and two Majorana CP violating phases. In the case of massive Majorana neutrinos, we can have more CP violation in the neutrino mixing matrix. Now, in practical calculations and application, it's convenient to use a specific parametrization of this matrix. And we have something that is called standard parametrization. And I'm going to use it in the next discussion in which the PMNS matrix is expressed in terms of product of a CKM-like matrix, which contains the Dirac CP violating phase, and a diagonal matrix, which contains the two Majorana CP violating phases. Now, the enormous amount of neutrino oscillation data that has been ac accumulated over many years of research allows us to determine with impressive precision the parameters which drive the solar neutrino oscillations, delta m squared to 1 and the angle theta 1, 2, those that drive the dominant oscillations of atmospheric mu neutrinos and antineutrinos, delta m squared 3, 1 and the angle theta 2, 3, and <coughs> the parameter which drives the oscillations which have been observed in reactor antineutrino experiments, Diabay, Renault, and Double Shaw, theta 1, 3, with very impressive pre pre precision. Now, this, these results are summarized in, summarized in this table, which is this, is, this represents the results of the most latest analysis of the global neutrino oscillation data. And uh, that was performed, actually, they came out in January this year. So a few comments. First of all, we know from data that the angle theta 1, 2 is definitely smaller than pi over 4. Pi over 4 is excluded at very high confidence level. 
actually the best feed value of sine square theta 1, 2 is around 0.3. Uh, concerning the angle theta 2, 3, uh, we know that it's the best feed value is somewhat larger than pi over 4. However, here the uncertainty in the value at one sigma level is about 10% and pi over 4 lies in one sigma allowed region. In what concerns the smallest mixing angle theta 1, 3, it's about 0.15. Uh, and sine square theta 1, 3 is determined with a precision, really extraordinary precision of about 4% at one sigma level. In what concerns the delta m squared, I mean the smaller one, responsible the solar neutrino oscillations is about 7.4 times to the minus 5 EV squared. And the second one uh, has a magnitude which is about 30 times bigger. Now, uh, this data, this really remarkable data, still doesn't allow us to determine the sign of the larger neutrino mass square difference. And the two possible signs correspond to two possible types of neutrino mass spectrum with normal ordering and inverted ordering. In a widely used convention of the numbering of neutrino mass eigenstates, the first one corresponds to the lightest neutrino being nu1, while the second corresponds to the lightest neutrino being nu3. The neutrino mass spectrum can also be hierarchical, normal and inverted hierarchical, when the lightest neutrino masses are much smaller than the other two masses or quasi-degenerate when the squares of the three, neutrinos, three neutrino masses are much bigger than the splitting between them, and this requires masses to be bigger than about 0.1 electron volt. Now, uh, this is the uh, scheme of the two possible types of neutrino mass spectrum. In what concerns the CP violating phase, the Dirac phase can cause CP violation in neutrino oscillations, which means a difference between the probabilities of new L, new L prime and anti newell anti newell prime when L differs from L prime uh, oscillations. Now, these effects, the CP violation effects in neutrino oscillations, are controlled by the so called rephasing invariant related to the Dirac phase present in neutrino mixing matrix, the JCP factor. And in the standard parametrization, it has this form. And the only unknown quantity here is sine delta. Now, as I will discuss shortly, we have hints that delta is 3 pi over 2. And if these hints are confirmed, then the JCP factor in the lepton sector will be of the order of minus 0 0.035. And it will be by three orders of magnitude bigger than the JCP factor in the quark sector. Uh, in what concerns the Majorana phases, we have no idea about their values. They play a very important role in processes in which the total lepton charge changes by two units and which are characteristic of the Majorana nature of massive neutrinos. However, our interest in both the Iraq and Majorana phases is stimulated by the very intriguing possibility that these phases provide the CP violation necessary for the generation of the baryon asymmetry of the universe and therefore indirectly may be related to our existence. Now, the hint about delta 3 pi over 2, this is, uh, I mean, shown here on this graph. It's a chi-square analysis of the existing data versus delta CP. And we see that uh, numerically, the best fit value at present is for the normal ordering is 1.3 times pi, and for inverted is 1.5 times pi. Delta 0 is disfavored at about 2.6 and 3. Uh, sigma confidence level. Pi is disfavored at about 1.7 and 3.3 sigma confidence level, which means that CP conservation is disfavored in the lepton sector. Uh, and uh, at th by the way, delta equal to pi over 2 is basically ruled out by the existing data. At 3 sigma, delta lies in the interval roughly between 1 and 2 pi. Now, let me go to the topic of, uh, this was the introduction, the topic of this talk. I believe, and I'm, I, I'm not alone in holding, this view, in holding this view, that with the observed pattern of neutrino mixing, nature is sending us a message. Now, this message is encoded in the values of neutrino mixing angles, leptonic CP violating phases, and neutrino masses. Of course, at present, we don't know what is the meaning, I mean, what is the content of this message. 
but on the basis of the ideas about the origin of the observed pattern of neutrino mixing, uh, we can conclude that this message can have two very different contents, each of which can be uh, expressed by one word, anarchy and symmetry. The anarchy approach or to symmetry. anarchy or symmetry, or yeah. symmetry. yes, and no, no, but yes, <laughs> <laughs> cannot be both. Uh, in the anarchy approach uh, to uh, neutrino mixing, which is developed by Hitoshi Murayama and his collaborators, it is assumed that nature threw dice when it was deciding on the values of neutrino mixing angles and CP violating phases. Uh, that is, it is assumed that these are random quantities. In this approach, values of the mixing elements are not predicted. What is predicted is their distributions. And these distributions tend to favor large values of the mixing angles. And therefore, theta 1, 3 is some kind of, it's a bit smallish for this type of approach. It, it sits on the tail of the corresponding uh, distribution. Uh, one of the main predictions of this approach is the absence of whatever correlations between the values of the mixing angles or between the values of the mixing angles and the CP violating phases. Now, in contrast, the, in the symmetry approach, we always get correlations between the values of the mixing angles or between the values of the mixing angles and CP violating phases. And of course, in many cases, we get specific predictions for the values of the mixing angles. Let me give you some examples. In class of theories, theta 2, 3 is predicted to be pi over 4, or to deviate by pi over 4 by quantity, which is determined by the angle theta 1, 3. In another classes of theories, sine squared theta 2, 3 can deviate significantly from 0.5. We have theories in which there is a correlation between theta 1, 2 and theta 1, 3. Uh, I mean, this is one example of this correlation. And this, is, this second one corresponds to a different class of theories. And finally, in, uh, in large classes of these theories, uh, the Dirac CP violating phase actually satisfies a sum rule by which it is expressed in terms of the three mixing angles and a parameter or set of parameters which characterize the underlying symmetry of the PMNS matrix. Uh, now, this suggests that the measurement of the Dirac phase in the neutrino mixing matrix, together with an improvement of the precision on the mixing angles theta 1, 2, theta 1, 3, and theta 2, 3, can provide unique information about the possible existence of new fundamental symmetry in the lepton sector. So this parameter delta and the mixing angles are extremely important from this point of view. Why symmetries? Now, if you look at the values of the mixing angles, let's ignore CP violating phases uh, for the time being, you, rea you realize that uh, they, the, wa the values that are determined from data are very close to values that you can get on the basis of symmetry considerations. For example, theta 1, 2 deviates from the so-called tri-by-maximal mixing value by a factor of which, by a value which is 0 0.02. It deviates from pi over 4 by a quantity which is of the order of Kabibo angle. Theta 1, 3 deviates from 0 by pi over 20, and theta 2, 3 uh, is of the order of pi over 4 plus minus 0.1. All these corrections that I have written here are subleading perturbative corrections. Now, this uh, uh, approach seems extremely natural, also in view of the fact that the p s matrix is, as you know, is a product of two matrices, one coming from the diagonalization of neutrino master, and a second coming from the diagonalization of the charge lepton master. In this approach, it is often assumed that the part that comes from the neutrino sector has an underlying symmetry form, while the corrections that you need in order to bring the symmetry values of the neutrino mixing angle to be compatible with the observed values are provided by the part which comes from the charged lepton sector. Now, as symmetry forms of the PMNS matrix widely considered in the literature is the so-called tri-by-maximal mixing, by maximal mixing, 
uh, a form which corresponds to the conservation of the st non-standard lepton charge, Le minus L mu minus L tau, where the angle theta 2, 3 mu is not determined, but if you use mu tau symmetry, it's fixed to be pi over 4. Then we have two forms related to the so-called golden ratio, golden ratio A form and golden ratio B form, where the angle theta 1, 2, sine squared theta 1, 2 mu, is related to the golden ratio in this way, in, golden, in A case, and predicts a value of 0.276. And in the second case, the relation is this one, and it predicts 0.345. We can have also the so-called hexagonal mixing, where theta 1, 2 is pi over 6. Now, uh, these symmetry forms of the PMNS matrix can be obtained from uh, symmetry considerations, as I said. For example, the tri maximal mixing form can come from a group of symmetries S4, which is a group of symmetries of permutations of all objects, A4, which is a group of symmetry of even permutations of all objects, T prime, which is the double covering of A4, by maximal mixing can be generated by S4. Golden ratio A can be generated by A5, which is a group of even permutations of five objects. Uh, and uh, for example, golden ratio B can be generated by dihedral group D10, and hexagonal symmetry can be generated by dihed dihedral group D12. Now, for all this symmetry form considered, theta 1, 3 is 0, and it has to be corrected. Theta 2, 3 is pi plus minus pi over 4, and if we have significant deviations from pi over 4, it has to be corrected. And they differ by the value of this parameter, theta 1, 2 nu. For these five forms, uh, sine squared theta 1, theta 1, 2 nu is given by 1 third, 0.5, which has to be corrected, 0 0.276, 0 0.345, and 0 0.25, which has to be corrected to be compatible with data. Now, these symmetries are actually symmetries of geometrical objects. A4 is the symmetry of the regular tetrahedron. S4 is the symmetry of the cube. Dn is the symmetry of regular, uh, pen, uh, regular, uh, regular pentagon. Okay, S4, <laughs> D4 is the symmetry of the square, uh, and A5 is the symmetry of icosahedron. Uh, here is a bit some information about uh, the group properties of these uh, symmetry groups number of elements, number of generators, and the number of, and the different irreducible representations, which are very important for these considerations. How does it work? Usually one starts with a non-abelian uh, discrete symmetry, valid at some high energy scale, which then at low energies is broken to residual symmetries in the charge lepton and neutrino sector, which have to be different. Now, these residual symmetries are actual symmetries of the charge lepton mass term and the neutrino mass term. And uh, uh, for as possible residual symmetries of the charge lepton mass term, for example, the largest one uh, are uh, being uh, subgroups, this, uh, the corresponding groups being subgroups of non-abelian discrete symmetry groups, these uh, residual symmetries can be described only by abelian uh, discrete symmetry groups. And in the case of charge lepton mass term, the largest symmetries are Zn with Z bigger or equal to 2, or Zn times Zm with N and M bigger or equal to 2. In the case of Majorana mass term, the largest symmetry is Z2 times Z2. Now, uh, as I said, these residual symmetries are symmetries of Majorana mass term for neutrinos and of the Dirac master of charged leptons. And therefore, they uh, actually uh, restrict or completely determine the matrices which diagonalize these mass terms. These matrices uh, are the matrices, actually, which form the PMNS neutrino mass matrix. And therefore, these residual symmetries are symmetries which fix or constrain significantly the PMNS mass matrix. Now, the 
the constraints on the PMNS matrix depend on the original non-abelian uh, symmetry, on the irreducible representations under which the left-handed charge lepton fields and left-handed neutrino fields transform with respect to the transformations, the symmetry transformations, and on the two uh, residual symmetries in the charge lepton and neutrino sector. And for this group that I'm groups that I'm going to consider further, <coughs> I mean, uh, it's important to identify what kind of residual symmetries or what kind of subgroups they have. And here is the list of their possible subgroups which play a role in this uh, analysis. Now, uh, I'm skipping some <coughs> slides which explain that in, in detail the technical aspects of uh, this uh, analysis. Now, let's look at predictions and the correlations which are predicted. Suppose that indeed the part of the PMNS matrix which comes from the neutrino sector has one of the five symmetry forms we have considered, and it is corrected by the part which comes from the charged lepton sector by a rotation matrix in uh, a plane, the one two plane. Uh, five minutes. Okay. Three minutes. Five, three, or three. zero? Three. <laughs> if you like to have one or two questions. <laughs> uh, so uh, rotation, suppose that it is corrected by a rotation uh, matrix in the one two plane coming from the charge lepton sector. The next uh, case in complication is when we have a correction which involves the product of two uh, rotations in planes coming, for example, in the one two and two three plane. In this case, it can be shown the Cosine of the Dirac phase indeed satisfies the sum rule, but which it is, explained, it is expressed in terms of the three neutrino mixing angles and the symmetry parameter, which determines what kind of uh, symmetries we have. Underlying symmetry of the PMNS matrix. This is the exact expression of this uh, uh, sum rule for cos delta. And you see that it depends on the symmetry form assumed, underlying symmetry form assumed of the PMNS matrix. This expression is valid in both cases. In the minimal case, when we have just one rotation in the one two plane, there is a correlation predicted be between the angle of theta two three and one two three. Now you have all the input that you need in order to calculate to predict the values of cos delta. For tri by maximal mixing, you get that cos delta is equal to minus 0.11. For golden ratio A, you get that it is uh, 0.29. Golden ratio B, minus 0.2. Hexagonal, minus 0.48, uh, plus 0.48. And for bi maximal mixing, the prediction is the delta is close to, close to pi. This implies that by measuring delta with sufficient precision, you can distinguish between different underlying symmetry form of the PMNS matrix. Now, relatively high precision measurements of delta will be performed at future planned neutrino oscillation experiments, Dune and T2HK. And uh, now, further, you can perform a chi-square analysis uh, to see how, uh, what would be the predictions for neutrino oscillation experiments on the basis of this prediction for delta. And you find that for four cases, these four underlying symmetry cases, actually JCP absence of CP violation effects is excluded at very high confidence level. And JCP at three sigma is predicted to be between 0.02 and 0.04. So you predict large CP violation effects in neutrino oscillations. In contrast, in the bimaximal mixing case, CP violation effects can be strongly suppressed. This is using the current data on neutrino mixing parameters. Now you go and see, do the following uh, analysis. You assume you make predictions for cos delta on the basis of the prospective precision that is expected to be reached in the measurement of sine squared theta 1, 2 in the June experiment, of sine squared theta 1, 3 in the Dyer Bay experiment, and of sine squared theta 2, 3 in T2K and NOVA combined. And what you find out are uh, these peaks. This is normal ordering, inverted ordering. The, the uh, assuming that the values of this, of the best fit values of the mixing angles are those that 
are determined today. Now, the bimaximal mixing disappeared from this uh, plot because it is strongly disfavored by uh, this analysis. Now, can you distinguish between these cases experimentally? This, has, this analysis has been done in this uh, paper and uh, from using the prospective data from Dune and T2HK. What you find that you can distinguish between golden ratio B and hexagonal mixing at more than three sigma. Golden ratio N, golden ratio B at, more at about two sigma. Try by maximal mixing and hexagonal case at about three sigma. And try by maximal mixing and golden ratio at about two sigma. So future experiments will be able to favor, I mean, either exclude some of these cases or uh, uh, disfavor them. Probably I should go to the conclusions. That will be appreciated. appreciated. If you want to add <laughs> okay, so let me go to the conclusions. This story is long, as you <laughs> see. Uh, yes. How now? What I would be happy that you get from this talk is the measurement of delta. Uh, the CP violating phase in the PMNS matrix and the, improved of the improvement of the precision of the measurement of neutrino mixing angles is, can have much more important implications for understanding the origin of the pattern of neutrino uh, mixing that is observed experimentally than just uh, the idea that these are another four parameters that have been, has to be determined uh, experimentally. I mean, it can provide really unique information about the existence of underlying funda new fundamental underlying symmetry in the left hand <coughs> sector. Okay, thank you. What is the status of the Katrin experiment? Katrin will start to take data this year. Good. Katrin Any is a, a measurement of absolute neutrino mass scale. Any Question? Story. Yes, the ruler. We know more about uh, fault mixing than about neutrino mixing. Is there a similar game to play there with uh, funny finite groups having to do with the masses and the mixing angles of quarks? Uh, yes, uh, and actually uh, you can extend it. Okay, some of these symmetries that I have considered uh, allow a straightforward extension to the quark sector, for example, T prime or A5. Others do not allow that. It's very important that uh, you have a symmetry group which allows for both triplet and doublet unitary irreducible representations because in the quark sector you have to distinguish between the first two families and the third family. And T prime has been extensively explored in order to explain both the quark mixing, the quark masses, and the lepton mixing and the lepton masses. So the answer is yes. And actually, through this approach, we can, if it is confirmed for leptons, we can even get some understanding of what is going on in the quark sector. I have it here. So, so you were. Oh, it's not me. Who is, who is first? Who is first? <laughs> yes, thank you. So I shall use now the, the opportunity that uh, uh, in my, which I shall tell, is a theory. Uh, I predict the symmetry of the four times four, either quarks or uh, leptons uh, mass matrices. Would this fit to your, because you just forget, you have uh, about possibility of having more than three, because you believe that the experiment said no fourth family. I am claiming it is. Now, in principle, I mean, if you consider, I don't know what, what do you mean by the fourth state. Uh, if you consider a fourth sterile neutrino state, you can extend this uh, formalism to cover all, also that case. Uh, so, uh, in principle, it is possible, of course, to do that. Yes. So, okay. So, uh, maybe you 
have to jump over it in all the slides that you did. But you, uh, you were making the point that um, T2K and NOVA will help. We already are already giving us some uh, information about uh, Delta CP. So can you explain a bit more or say in, uh, quantitatively if you consider what else Dune will bring or sup this hyper K? Is, this is the part that I didn't have time to cover. Yes, that's why I'm asking. Now, uh, you can go and do a systematic analysis of all the, all the possible GEs, I mean, residual symmetries in the lepton sector, in the, quark, in the, in the charged lepton and neutrino sectors, with these uh, four groups that I have considered. There are altogether 75 models. If you use the current data on neutrino oscillations and assume that it is the correct data, then the, the, viability, uh, the viability test is passed only by uh, 14 models. which I didn't have to describe. Now, further, you do the following. You assume the sensitivity that will be reached in Dune and T2HK, and you test the predictions of these 14 models. And uh, you do that yes, only yes, on the basis of the data of yes, neutrino max mixing angles, without involving the data, prospective data on cos delta. Of these 14 models, what remain are six models. And if you use further the data from uh, prospective data from Dune and T2HK, you will reduce these, 14 model, these six models further. It's an ongoing analysis, and I cannot tell you at the moment how much further, but uh, probably what will survive will be two or three models, not more. It so it's an extremely powerful uh, method, I mean, using the data of T2HK and Dune to test this approach to neutrino mixing. Last question. Yeah. So, so if you take the number of groups that we discuss, including also continuous groups, which are nonlinear realized, the number of Fermi representations you can play with, the number of flavones you can take to break it, I would claim, and I worked on this myself, as you know, that I can cover the parameter space at the level of percent and below. At that level of precision, you have to add an additional randomization group running, namely all the physics at high scales that shifts your things at the percent level. So the question then is how precise should we measure those parameters and what do you think you can learn from this in the end? I mean, this is the expression of the pessimistic view <laughs> about the approach. Now, I, I am kind of much more optimistic and, uh, than Manfred. And I don't think that uh, you can cover continuously all the parameter space, all the possibilities. I mean, the, the possibilities are discrete. Usi usi okay. using, the discrete, using discrete symmetries, you have discrete possibilities and finite number. Uh, well, and as I showed on this example, I mean, you have very powerful methods of excluding models. Yeah, but you know, Let's we have these DN groups, we have a scan yeah. system where millions of groups with computer algebra and they can no, it I mean, as precise as you want. Look, I mean, if you go... If Positive you, note. <laughs> uh, if, you, if you use simple groups, then the number of possibilities okay. is really very limited. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you.